Buenos días, Tesla Millionaires. <risa> Hola, soy Alejandro Sauquillo y estoy aquí con Joe Justice. Joe Justice is the chair of the board of the Agile Business Institute. He's the writer of a Scrum Master that today I know that is also written in Spanish. I really recommend to those of you that want to make more agile your companies. We will put a link in the description. He was the founder of Wikispeed, a car manufacturer startup that still holds four world records. And last but not least, maybe the most important for our podcast, for our channel, is that he was in 2020 mm, operating Agile at Tesla. So, wow, man, you have done so much in your life. Thank you for accepting this invitation. Alejandro, it is my pleasure to, with you, reach out to more of the Spanish preference audience. I really think many investors that prefer Spanish might not be aware of how structurally different a company like Tesla is and why it performs so well. And I wanted to ask you about this. Tesla, it's an extreme agile company, but why did you decide with all the expertise that you had, because apart from everything that I've said, you've worked uh, with Jeff Bezos in Amazon, with Bill Gates in Microsoft and the, in the um, Gates Foundation, you've worked in Apple. And why did you decide to work in Tesla? And how was that time that you spent there? Mm. Speed of innovation is the only thing that matters in the long run. That's actually a quotation from Elon Musk. And that's how I judge companies. And that's what also gets me excited. I saw a Tesla products mix changing in hardware and software faster than anyone. And I said, I want to test my knowledge, what I think works for agile hardware. I want to go work inside that company. And I did. And um, how was it? Because I've watched many of your uh, interviews, presentations, and in I think it's in the wire of Fajal, you said, man, that company is intense. So uh, for you that you're a world record holder in Wikispeed, how intense was it? And how do you compare it with other companies such as Amazon and Microsoft, for example? I've never had so much fun at work is when I was working at Tesla. And the reason why is because it's so fast. Every other company I've ever been in truly feels like it's moving in slow motion compared to Tesla. It's lightning fast and that's exhilarating. I think if the company's mission isn't core to your values, you'd probably burn out. But if your values align with the company's values, it's invigorating and energizing. It's incredibly intense. It's incredibly fast. And if that's aligned with your value system, it's the most fun you could possibly have. Um, you, you're already saying it, that it's, it's been really, really fun, but it's really intense. Um, as far as I know, the first day that you arrive in Tesla, they give you with many weapons that maybe you don't have in other companies, such as, uh, or can, can you explain a little bit which tools do you have like from the first day in Tesla working there? Yeah, there, there's a four hour onboarding, at least there was at the time I joined. I assume it's quite similar still. And you're given the not a handbook handbook. And that's been leaked online by somebody else. So I can refer to it. It's on scribd.com now. It's amazing. And the company truly runs that way. The handbook says, the not a handbook handbook says, you are empowered. You can do anything. You can talk to Elon directly anytime you want. Anyone can. If anyone tries to stop you from talking to Elon directly, that's grounds for them to be fired. That keeps the company flat right there. And you can work across any department. In fact, there aren't really departments. Like you are fully strong. And if anyone prevents you from doing anything that you think is right, they will get thrown out of the company. That's what you're presented with as you join, no matter what position you join in, no matter what salary, it doesn't matter. Night shift minimum wage does not matter. That's what you get. And then whatever phone you walked in with is loaded with apps. I believe it was 24 apps at the time I joined. And these apps 
give you real time progress on Tesla's finance and deliveries. There's things like, did a customer decline an order? You know that immediately. And you know, I should probably care about that. I should probably go to the root cause of why a customer declined that order. Was it because some there was an issue with the seats they didn't like? The paint wasn't their expectation. What is it? And I should try to fix the root of that. So you're given self-management tools and you're not assigned a manager. Instead, you're given apps that let you decide Where's the highest value you could add right now? And you're not assigned to any one area. You then just go into production and start designing, making financial decisions to the best of your capability. I am an agile uh, aficionado. Maybe some people would say an agile expert. So I went into that. Other people might have deep expertise in robotics control, and they would primarily go to areas where they think they could add value with robotics control. And then they might try something new later. So you are radically empowered. These apps give you your short feedback loop so you're self-managing. And if anyone has ever been to something called an open space conference, that's how Tesla runs. An open space conference, you don't even know the agenda in advance. You walk into a big conference hall, maybe. Maybe there's thousands of people. And anyone suggests a topic. And those are listed across a, a big a wall or monitor to say, here are possible agendas for our conference. Walk to the one you're interested in. So people just continually post new ideas and say, I'm in conference room this number, or I'm at the end of this hallway because we ran out of conference rooms. And you go to the one you're interested, which is called the law of two feet. That's how Tesla works. You come in and your phone, whatever phone you came in with, is loaded with all this information that says, here's what's important to the company. And that's your agenda. And you go, you are fully empowered. It is unlike any other company I've ever been in. And it's crazy fast. Mm, you've said so many things right now. And one of the things that blew my mind most about what you're saying when I was investigating you is like, you said, okay, there is a problem in Tesla and there's not a managing team that is deciding what to do. It's like the artificial intelligence or machine learning that is telling which problems we have. And then all these problems shows in the apps that you're saying to 10,000 employees. And these 10,000 employees, they gather together, they create small teams of six people, you say, sometimes up to 250, but okay, let's say six people. These six people gather together and they solve a problem in three hours. Can you explain how is this process with an example? Because it's really amazing. Yeah, an example that's public now. Some of the investors saw when Tesla changed the Model 3 charge rate publicly online from 200 kilowatt hours to 250 kilowatt hours. That was a big event. It sent the stock, stock price up. Um, I got to see that. So I, I can talk about it. It's publicly known. It's advertised. So here's, what, here's part of what happened. I would often come in, well, actually every day, I would come in an hour to two hours before my shift to explore what was downstream from where I thought I was gonna be working today. And then I would often stay an hour to two hours, actually I'd always stay an hour to two hours after my shift to go uh, upstream, sorry, reverse, in the morning upstream and in the, in the evening downstream to see the parts that connected to where I happened to be that day and to take notes. So I made diary after diary. Well, in the morning I was walking uh, through one of the areas of the mothership, as we call it in Fremont, California, where it's design and test and build in the same building, like most facilities. And there's this dumpster, this huge bin, truck size bin full of aluminum rods. They're all bent and it's labeled scrap. And I think, oh, okay, here's a lean opportunity. There's a whole bunch of scrap. Why is there so much scrap here at this spot? So I, that's what caught my eye. And I pivot in to, to take a look. And there's a group of people, most of them are coming and going, but one person is primarily looking really busy and other people are involved to some extent. And they're on a laptop and the laptop is sitting on top of a uh, German made CNC rod bender. So aluminum rod gets funneled in automatically out of a 
out of a stock, out of a cartridge, and it's bent according to the 3D drawing, the CAD, to be whatever shape you typed in CAD. And every time you make a bend, there's some level of spring back. So there's a lot of hand tuning, even though there's algorithms to help you, there's a lot of hand tuning to get it to be the shape you actually want. And the aluminum tubes had a, a coat of bright orange plastic on the outside, and then a thin other layer of aluminum, and then another layer of a bright orange plastic. And I started to recognize what that is, because I'd been building a lot of cars by this point and helping design and engineers a lot of cars. And I said, do you mind if I watch? And the person looking at the laptop says, nope, no problem. You're fully trusted. There's no question of, do you deserve the information? Like anyone, if you have a Tesla badge, you are trusted. And so I watch and I say, do you mind if I help? No, of course not. And that was me using the law of two feet to, to start to help. What was happening is that person had an idea that if they changed the way the rods, the aluminum rods that connect from the charge port to the battery pack, that, that was the bottleneck for allowing new power to, more power to come in. And it would dissipate its own heat simply by being a larger diameter rod and a few other things. And if they changed this rod, they could get more kilowatt hours into the pack. And what they were doing was they had the idea, so they just started bending rod. And even if they had generated a million dollars worth of scrap rod, which I don't think they came anywhere near that, it would have been worth it because going from 200 kilowatt hours to 250 kilowatt hours of charge rate surged the stock more than several billion dollars worth. So this empowering the employees worked out. So this person and everyone else coming in and helping, like me even a little bit, were bending the rod to try to get to fit and then putting it on cars in the plant. Now, these cars, because they have automated testing, you can try something anytime and know if it worked or not really quickly. Well, the automated test said, pass, those cars were sold. In three hours, it went from idea to now the cars accept 250 kilowatt hours. Now, they weren't advertised as accepting 250 kilowatt hours until further validation, but they were already being sold. They, could, they were already as good as before. In fact, they were better. And later, those same cars that were already sold, it was turned on. By the way, you can now charge 250 kilowatt hours. The owner's got a free upgrade. So thank you from all the Tesla owners that can charge up to 250 kilowatt hours. You said uh, something that I have mm, uh, recently known thanks to, to you, is that the um, validations, they get really, really fast. And as far as I know, like traditional companies, they make maybe one validation per year or so every two years. And Tesla is running um, completely all, like every day. And this is done partly thanks to factory mode that runs simulations. Can you explain a little bit like the difference between the traditional way of doing it and how Tesla is doing all these um, validations? Absolutely, absolutely. Most businesses want to reduce how much innovation happens for test purposes. Testing or homologation, making something road legal, that's usually a year long and $10 million, maybe more, sometimes $100 million per model. So if you change a Ford F-150 to a new Ford F-150, it goes through a year long certification testing and about $100 million in the case of the F-150. So people managing cost look at spreadsheets and say, we don't want to do that very often. That's really expensive and it takes a long time. So let's do that like every five years, seven years, 10 years, because change is painful. Well, a, an agile company like Tesla, and remember Musk came from PayPal. Musk had already created X.com and PayPal and was already an agile native thinker. Well, in an agile company, what you do instead is you reduce the cost to change. Instead of changing slower because it's expensive, you very aggressively reduce the cost to change. And what that means is automated testing. By making it cheaper and faster to go through road legal certification, it's less painful. So you can make change more often. And Tesla got so good at it that autopilot is the side effect. 
Tesla's automated test is what's called factory mode. They also have even more simulated tests, and part of that is Dojo. That's how huge these initiatives are. The R&D on Tesla's R uh, automated testing is more than a lot of com companies' total valuation. Like Testing is a first-class citizen because it is the gateway to speed. If you can test a new model as road legal or not in 10 seconds for $1, what does that mean to your pace of deployment of new features? And Tesla is pretty close to that. It's a huge effort to do that. I mean, it's so big that it's the entire autopilot budget. Like autopilot was the side effect of having the cars test themselves in factory mode. But the result is there's essentially zero cost to make change in Tesla. And every single car is individually tested as road legal. Oh, wow, I mean, it's uh, incredible the kind of um, information that you're giving. And you've said that Elon Musk comes from PayPal, but Elon Musk, apart from Tesla, he has a SpaceX, Boring Company, OpenAI, Neuralink. And in some of your info, I've heard that there's a close collaboration among, among the five companies. Can you give me one example that you've seen or you've heard or you've experienced working with other of the masks companies? Sure. There's a lot more I wish I could talk about, but I don't get to say some things unless someone else has already mentioned it. Okay. Now, interestingly, Musk is really proactive about making sure the most important things are said publicly. Uh, Musk does not do information hiding. Musk aggressively says, here competition, this is why we're successful. You should copy and help the world. Musk famously open sourced most of the patents saying all our patents are belong to you. I mean, that's the type of leadership culture. It's radically transparent. There's still though things that no one has decided to say yet or taken the time or Musk just hasn't had the time to say, so I can't. But what I can don't, say- Don't worry, is Elon Musk doesn't speak Spanish so far. <laughs> so if he learns, uh, if if he learns, we will hide it. Sorry, oh, you're, sorry you're to interrupt the jokes. You are hilarious. <laughs> what what has been said is um, the Model Three and Model Y original body in white were designed by teams at SpaceX. Uh, and then what I can say is I have gone to SpaceX, both Hawthorne, California, and Boca Chica, while I was a tes Tesla employee. Uh, there's heavy overlap and exchange between all the Musk companies. When you're an employee of a Musk company, you're trusted. And if your law of two feet takes you into another Musk company, there's almost no notice. It, it almost doesn't matter. If, you're, if your uh, access control says SpaceX or Neuralink or Boring Company or Tesla, they're almost fully exchangeable. You can go the same places, you have access to the same digital storage, the same data repositories, the same machine learning, the, the same physical work areas. Um, and of course, in each or and every of these companies, um, you've said that, okay, I go to work, okay, me not, but maybe somebody who's watching that is smart enough to work there goes, a, a young, bright engineer goes to work for, for Tesla, and maybe in the job application, there's like, you're going to do this, 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 but you say, once you're inside Tesla, you don't have requirements and you don't have bosses. So how do you work without bosses and without like fixed work, like as an, in a traditional company? Totally, totally. Now this is part of that thing called Agile which is becoming more and more popular, and it's very common in Silicon Valley. Still, there's a lot of people who have never worked in an Agile company, or honestly, Agile is also a fad now, so there's some companies saying they're Agile that aren't. So maybe people haven't experienced this important part of Agile, which is called self-organization. Part of speed comes from self-organization and self-management. And the only way you can get that is if you have a fast feedback loop. For example, Think of you, me, all of us like uh, Shiba Inus, like Doges. So we're, we're, these, we're these awesome, cute, loyal dogs that are super smart, super friendly, and we demonstrate a fantastic 
mobile portable low transaction cost currency. So let's say that. We're, we're these dojas, we're these Shiba Inus. Well, a way to train a Shiba Inu is to click. The Shiba Inu does something desirable, like it jumps up on an agility test and you click. And the Shiba Inu says, oh, I did something great. And if they don't hear that click, they don't even need to be reprimanded or spanked or anything. They just know, oh, I, I didn't do it right. So they, they, they associate, they choose, actually they choose to domesticate themselves is one of the current theories. They choose to associate that click with a serotonin and oxytocin release, a sense of good feeling. And absence of that click is enough to say, oh, okay, I probably didn't do it right. Now, what makes that click work is that it's immediate. If you clicked 15 minutes later, the Shiba Inu is gonna be like, what? I don't, I don't, I don't know what, what I did. It's the same principle, interestingly, for humans mostly, except sometimes we can wait even more than 15 minutes for feedback, but faster is still better. If we simply get a thumbs up or a green light or something that says that was good, we can self-manage. Now, because most companies historically had no automation for that, they had something called a manager. And that was a human whose job it was to say, yes, that was good. Really, that's their number one job. Yes, that was good, as quickly as possible. If they miss and ignore someone for a few months, that person, their productivity tends to suffer. They get what's called disengaged, and sometimes they even quit. So having a fast feedback loop from management is what allows us to manage our own work. Well, if you automate that, if your company has a deep expertise in machine learning and visual understanding of the world around it, you can put machine learning everywhere and give fast feedback through your phone and these huge monitors hanging all over the facility. And if you can create machine learning that basically says good job or thumbs up, it doesn't even have to say bad job. It doesn't need to. It just needs to say that was, that was better than before. People can self-manage and you no longer have any need for management. Now, the other need for me, the other responsibility of traditional management is decide what work to do. Well, that can largely be auto detected and it's even more accurate if it's crowdsourced. So crowdsourcing and machine learning validation have also replaced the agenda from management. Then lastly, there's the idea of career pathing. How do you decide who gets promoted and who doesn't? Well, when there aren't managers, what position would you be promoted to? There is no ladder. You just join and work, like that's it. I mean, Musk works the line like everybody else for 80 hours a week. There is no ladder to climb. So how do you continually feel validated and valuable? Stock price. That's what solves for the last part of management and replaces almost any sense of a career ladder. Every employee, whether you were hired to sweep the floors, is expected to do everything to make the company successful. No one is limited or restricted. And as a result, every employee has the same awesome stock purchase price options. You get a huge discount on stock and you get the best stock price within a quarter anytime you buy that quarter automatically. You have very generous times at which you can trade even as an employee. It's phenomenal. And so many of the people you're working with are millionaires, many of them. And they're working there for the same salary as you. Almost everyone makes the same salary, but salary is not the point. The stock price is where you would make your money. And if you're there only to make money, you're probably gonna burn out anyway, it's just so intense. But if you're there for the mission, well, then you're happy because you're a millionaire and you're working with other people who are on their way to being millionaires or they are already, and you're making a difference towards your mission. So that solves, that replaces every traditional aspect of management. And that's largely the product of Tesla's deep investment and skill at machine learning and visualization processing. Oh, wow. Um, okay, these millionaires, happy workers of Tesla, you've said many times that they, like a traditional Um, car is made or project is made in five years maybe and Tesla does it in three months and you've explained how the modularity helps to build these short uh, projects so uh, can, can you explain it a little bit 
Oh, sure, sure. Most other companies, most slower companies, they have finances are held by an owning group, an owning family often in the board. And that family says, prove to me why we should spend money. Why should we spend 10 million euro? Show me how that's going to make 30 million euro. And that's a several week or month long decision making process through the board. So to spend any significant amount of money, it's usually several weeks to several months. That's step one. Then once you decide to spend money, that owning family or the board approves the spend in most slow companies, then you have what's called a waterfall plan. You have a group of planning experts, and they truly are experts, work often for months or years on what's the plan, often down to the individual task, to make this new car. <laughs> Maybe it will be the new BMW 3 Series or the new Mercedes-Benz Daimler S-Class or the new MAN truck or bus, and whatever it is. So now you have this meticulous plan that took months or years and all those people's salaries. So it's already millions and millions of euro just in plan and you haven't made anything yet. Then that plan is handed off to a separate group to do design. And now you have CAD engineers, finite element analysis, um, uh, automotive designers, aestheticians, and usually they're global. So they, they work in Hungary and Stuttgart and Florida and Croatia and Poland, and they make pieces of CAD. And often those pieces of CAD don't fit together. So they have iterations where they say, well, I finished my CAD. The fact that it doesn't fit with your CAD is not my problem, that's your problem. And now you have months of what's called integration fix. And that's typically another group of people who aren't even the same engineers who are drawing now the integration and the edits to make these pieces fit together. And this is why a lot of cars look kind of bloated and have extra space in them or strange shapes is from this integration that happens in Pennsylvania and Detroit and um, again, Croatia and Paris and et cetera. And these people working and they, they don't talk to each other very often. When they do, it's a meeting where they don't work. They just talk. And it's mostly why doesn't your piece fit with mine instead of you know, working together, collaborative sessions? Okay, this is the waterfall. So you've started with approving the budget and it's cascaded down like a waterfall to design. And then that design, once it works in CAD, cascades down to the factory. And the factory does what's called productization. And it's their job to say, okay, how are we gonna build this thing? And the CAD has been made by people who have largely never worked in a factory. Maybe they've taken a tour, but maybe never. They may have never even been in a factory. And the people that are going to try to make this thing look at it and say, obviously, this was designed by people who have never worked in a factory. <laughs> like, there's no way to even reach in here and attach this. Like, that is, it is impossible to make this shape. And so they have to redesign. By now, it's usually been two, three, four years since initial concept pitch, uh, uh, funding pitch. Once it exits productization, then we have manufacturing tooling and vendor uh, onboarding. The design has been, we've made some manufacturing prototypes, some manufacturing test mules. Uh, vendors have been contacted and said, we want you to deliver the lowest possible cost. It must meet these specifications. Um, and the vendor says, okay, I'll respond in six months. We're going to do some proof of concepts. And then internally in your line, people start saying, who are we going to hire? What building do we need to buy? What machines do we need to buy? And often these parts are pressed like Play-Doh. And so you have these big metal dies, we call them. They're just big metal molds, like just like Play-Doh, but they're millions of euro a piece or millions of dollars a piece to press the metal into the right shape like a sandwich. And those are ordered. Well, now machinery starts to come in, dyes start to come in, suppliers' prototypes start to come in, and you probably are about five years after original funding. And real life happens. Things don't work the first time. Metal springs back after being stamped, and so you have to shave the, the dyes to be a different shape or even make new dyes, and that's now six months later. right? This happens all the time. Production issues, production hell. This is what production hell is, changing the dyes, the robots. We ordered 30 of these robots and found none of them actually work for this reason. None of us knew until we tried it, none of them work. We have to order 30 more robots. 
and configure them. And by the way, they're six months on back order. And this is production hell going through this. And oh, the machine doesn't fit through the door. We ordered it, but no one checked that we're actually we moved from the previous north building to now the south building and the door's a different dimension. And the zoning authorities won't let us enlarge the door unless we put a new roof on. Okay, we have to re-roof the building before we can even test the robot. Ah, okay, this is production hell. Now you're where most companies are and you're at about the 14 year mark. Most of the engineers that did the first design, they've retired. They've gone to another company. They They're not even there anymore. And this is normal. And if you ever get in a rental car after driving a Tesla and think, wow, this feels 14 years old today. And this is this year's model. Well, it's true. It is 14 years old. It's true. That car you're driving off the rental car lot, unless it's a Hertz that does Tesla now, was a concept someone had probably more than 14 years ago, possibly 25 years ago. And it's this year's model. Now, when projects are fast tracked, that means they don't allow multitasking. So someone will actually wait, a CAD engineer will wait and not work on something else until they get feedback, their design doesn't fit. And so they're ready to, to update it. So it's still waterfall, but they're waiting for feedback during the length of the waterfall. Toyota does that sometimes, and they can get some of these cycles down to two and a half years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Tesla does something entirely different and they release new models in, well, there's updates about every three hours. And that's, change in shape of the metal in the car, the electronics, different circuits, different software, about every three hours. And many of those projects are three hours long. Some of those are three months long. And in aggregate, you have a pace of change that the rest of the industry does not even understand. And what that means is traditional investment calculus won't work, not, not traditional investment calculus. Traditional investment calculus is What's your profit per unit? Because your units aren't going to change for five, seven, 14 years. So we can already, we already know your profit per unit because they're not going to change. So tell me your profit per unit and how many units you're going to make over the next 14 years. And I can make a formula for the value of your company. Well, that doesn't apply to a company that's changing on a faster cadence, in this case, multiple times a day, because the profit amount per car increases. Every, every three hours. And what the car is, it's value going from a Model 3 to a Model 3 performance. It, range increases, speed increases, handling increases, noise vibration and harshness decrease, warranties extend every month. There is no model for that except a trend line. You can show that with a trend line. And this is what flips out investors. They get really angry on the investor calls. Investors from institutions like Goldman Sachs ask Elon, what's your profit per vehicle and over how many years? And Elon says, we don't calculate that, but here's our trend. And our trend is going up. And for people that are used to thinking in trends like agile companies, you see this company's trend is the best. It is the dream. It is an exponential growth trend. They're already sold out into next year. This is this tells you as an agile investor, this company is winning. It's winning as hard as, it, as you can win. I want to put all my money in this company. But to an institutional investor, it breaks their formula. They don't even have an Excel spreadsheet for it. And they keep shorting Tesla, or they, they did. Now I think they've given up on trying to model it largely. Um, speaking about investors and speaking about the future, you, you like many of the followers of my channels are retail investors. I think it was in the Agile Warrior um, interview that you said something like, I don't know if you were joking or you were saying seriously, at the end of the interview, you said something like, by the way, Tesla will be worth 1,000x more. So yeah. did yeah. you really believe that? Um, why do you say that? 1,000x is conservative. Um, it, it, yeah, Tesla is... Is, is going way past the moon. So, so here, here's, here's why. If Tesla succeeds as, as much as they want to, you could add up the total market cap of all existing internal combustion automotive manufacturers and buses and even heavy machinery at some point. And all of that market cap 
would then fit into Tesla. Well, that's happened already. Retail investors have understood that. Okay. Well, what about energy? Tesla is now an approved energy utility in Texas, and more markets are following. If Tesla does succeed, and their track record is pretty good so far, if Tesla does succeed, you could add up the value of the utility and energies markets. ExxonMobil, add that market cap. British Petroleum, add that market cap. Traditional coal in China, add that market cap. Now you're talking about like the Agricultural Bank of China level stuff. This is really big numbers. Add all that if Tesla is successful. And that's the energy play. Okay, okay. Well, what else? SpaceX already announced that they're attempting to have inter-Earth travel. New York City to Tokyo, uh, Mexico City to Maldives, in anywhere on the planet Earth less than 60 minutes. SpaceX track record is very good. If, space, if SpaceX is successful, you can add up the market cap of United Airlines, American Airlines, Aeromexico, Delta, Japan Airlines, Singapore Airlines. You can add all of those together. And that also includes their freight business. And you can add up many luxury charters and helicopter services as well because the speed is so fast. Well, that's an interesting transport market. You can actually even put some stuff that traditionally goes by boat because the massive cargo volume of Starship it allows for very large diameter and even heavyweight products. Well, currency, Tesla is making plays in cryptocurrency and they're not only using those markets, they're investing in those markets. So if Bitcoin goes up, Tesla goes up because of their large <laughs> Bitcoin holding. They are. It's very smart. Same with Doge. Arguably, Elon just bought $10 billion worth of Doge. And that, that may have just happened. We'll, we'll get more detail soon. So if any of those cryptocurrencies go, goes up, Tesla's valuation increases correspondingly. More than that, look at all smartphones, all laptops, all televisions. So Sony, Apple, Dell, Alienware is part of Dell, et cetera, et cetera, Toshiba, Hitachi. Add all of those up. If Neuralink works, are you going to want to use a phone that you can't talk to with Neuralink? Or are you going to want to use a phone that you can talk to with Neuralink? You can potentially add all communications budgets, all communications budget market cap into Tesla uh, or SpaceX, but Tesla and SpaceX do have a symbiotic financial relationship. Starlink, same. Are you going to want to use any other phone provider it, if, if Starlink is cheaper and works everywhere on planet Earth and even beyond? It could win. You could potentially add all telecom, all of it, all T-Mobile, all AT&T, all Verizon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You, you could potentially add them all. Um, and the Tesla bot as well, with, the lay, with all the labor. The Tesla bot say, as well. That, Tesla bot, the robot that unveiled oh, the robot, AI yes. day. It, it has huge potential. Sorry. You... No, yes. Tesla bot has a potential to change the way we think about labor. Elon understands this fundamental shift. And as a result, Elon advocates for um, global income, minimum global income, and uh, versions of global health care, making sure you're taken care of. Because quite potentially, Musk companies will change the world to the point that work is no longer needed or even helpful. Now, Musk gets that too. Musk is already thinking about what government means and talks about government as a business at the limit, a business with a monopoly on violence. And Musk is attempting to set up, it certainly looks like, and I, I believe it, a peaceful, business-friendly, respectful, healthy, replacement for government with Mars and potentially the moon base as a prototype. And working in Tesla is a mini prototype of that. You essentially get universal basic income, awesome healthcare. And if the company does well, you get massive money through stock returns. Well, Musk, is, it looks like he's attempting to create a government model like that. Now, Musk cannot be elected as president of the United States because Musk was not born in the United States. There's a current law in the US specifying that. <laughs> Musk already has Giga Berlin, Giga Shanghai, and I and already looking towards India and others. Musk isn't 
settling for any one country and has never been a nationalist. Musk is about progress for the light of consciousness. So yeah. when we watch Star Trek and they've replaced money with credits and they've replaced government with the United Federation of Planets, Elon is essentially building the United Federation of, of Planets. And he jokingly said, would I be emperor or God emperor? <laughs> And Elon is replacing currency with credits. And those credits are Bitcoin for large holdings and Dogecoins for low transaction cost, typical holdings. Bitcoin is the new gold. Dogecoin is the new peso or dollar or yen or euro. So now you add up the entire market cap of money and the entire value of harvestable materials through, uh, through Optimus Subprime through the Tesla bot. And you, you take the concept of government and taxation, multiply them all by 10 because they've been innovated. And that is the future value of Tesla. Wow. Um, uh, that's a super bullish uh, view, but I, I, I like it and I share most of what you were saying. And um, coming back to the ground, to your experience in Tesla, You've said several times that you were working next to Elon Musk. How would you define Elon Musk? Elon works on the floor with everybody. Elon spends 80 hours a week at whatever the bottleneck is. Uh, if the bottleneck is Giga Berlin, Elon is in Giga Berlin, sleeping in a sleeping bag in Giga Berlin. If the bottleneck, and by the bottleneck, I mean towards expanding consciousness out among the stars, that bottleneck. So not the bottleneck just for Tesla or just for SpaceX or just for the boring company, but towards the greater vision, whatever is currently the limiting factor to that, that's where Musk lives. And whoever's working there works with Musk. Musk pairs with everybody. He doesn't talk down to anybody. And Musk does the work, drilling metal, lifting 20 kilograms, getting robots unstuck, drawing CAD, calling suppliers, visiting the permit office in Germany to say, what's the block, what's the holdup? And then actually going to the legislator's office to talk about the law change, to, to make the permit more feasible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Musk, it's not like Musk comes up and works next to you because you're cool. Musk is there because that's where the bottleneck is and Musk is simply doing the work. And if you happen to be there too, or use your law of two feet to go over there, then you work with Musk. And Musk does work 100 hours a week. So about 20 hours of those hours a week are spent on growing investments. So the money has a fast rate of cash. A significant difference of an agile company and a non-agile company, and investors might appreciate this or be terrified by this, is agile companies don't budget. They don't know. They say, we don't know if there'll be a chip shortage later in the year or not. We don't know. We can't know. So we don't budget. Instead, we track rate of spend. It's called burn rate. So every team knows on your app, on your phone, and on these big monitors, what the burn rate is for your team. How much money is your team spending an hour, a minute, or maybe a week, depending on the type of product your team is, is, is improving. Then your team has indicators of did the value of Tesla cars, for example, increase? Did the cost to make them go down? Did the warranty go up? Uh, did good things happen? Was it worth your burn rate? And that is called capital efficiency. And because you can see that yourself, you can see the capital efficiency of any product, you self-manage your own finances because you can. It, it becomes a, like a simple two numbers competing against each other. And the green one needs to be bigger than the red one. Like it's pretty simple bank account visualization. And every team has that. And that allows the company to self-manage. So Musk spends about 20 hours a week ensuring there's a big enough cash pile that they won't run out of money anytime soon. And there is no budgeting or almost no budgeting. Teams essentially deploy capital as fast as they responsibly can, which is called CapEx efficiency. And uh, Winkerhorn talks about that. Um, I, I was going uh, to tell you, um, of course, he, Elon Musk, he's, um, he comes from a software background. Now he's doing all these agile, um, incredible, fast uh, things in, inside uh, Tesla, SpaceX, 
And we can see if we compare it with Blue Origin that also uh, Jeff Bezos, he has an agile background, he has a software background. SpaceX uh, goes much, much faster than Blue Origin. So what, what would you say like, what is the main difference between Elon Musk and, for example, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates that you met, or any other leaders? Like, what makes this man stand out? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give more of my personal opinion here, my, my personal take. Um, Musk introduced himself to Saturday Night Live as autistic. And I actually think, I, personally, I think that is one of Musk's largest superpowers. Um, Bezos comes from Wall Street and looks like Bezos's ideal dreams are a Wall Street person's dream to have the most beautiful house in the world, which would mean it's floating up in space. Like it's, it, it's that type of external, hey, look at me, New York style success. That looks like that's what Bezos wants. Um, Bill Gates is social good minded and enjoys doing parallel executed work, splitting complex problems into parallel executable small problems, which is extremely agile and has worked great for Bill Gates. But Bill Gates' goal isn't to spread consciousness among the stars. Musk grew up reading sci-fi in South Africa. And I don't know how many of us have been to South Africa. I worked there for a little while. It looks like Mars. It, it's... It's the real deal. There are packs of hyenas that will eat your baby if you're not careful. Like it's, it's a legitimately harsh environment and it's a bunch of red packed sand in a lot of places. There, there's large expanse. It's, that's not all it is. There's awesome jungle and waterfall and lakes. And, but there are areas that are packs of red sand and it looks like Mars. And Musk grew up reading sci-fi and being bullied by other people because he was autistic. He wasn't a naturally handsome, charismatic leader like potentially Bezos and Bill Gates are. He was a little shrimp of a kid that was beaten up almost to the point of death and escaped that harsh reality by reading sci-fi. It looks like down in the pit of Musk's stomach, what Musk would actually like to do is spread the light of consciousness out among the stars. Bezos just had a $500 million yacht built. That shows what Bezos' real ambitions are. Bill Gates actually does a lot of the same stuff. Bill hides Bill's wealth. Uh, he's not as flashy with it, but Bill's house in Medina, Washington, I, I lived relatively near there when I lived in Seattle. It's this massive complex built into the side of a hill, multiple stories underground. There's a, a stream running through Bill's house that exits out into beautiful Lake Washington. There's a statue of Bill and Melinda, and I think they're kids, sticking out of the lake, cast in bronze, larger than life. I mean. Bill has a different version of success as well. Uh, to some level, hey, look at me. Musk shoots, anytime Musk makes money, he doesn't go out and buy a Gucci belt or a Hermes scarf. Anytime Musk makes money, Musk uses it to more quickly and efficiently deploy light of consciousness out among the stars. And it doesn't look like Musk is going to stop that. There's not like a level where Musk says, now I can go build the big I'm house. Done. Musk yeah. never wanted a big house. And that tenacity will win, period, over any of these other people. Okay, as we're uh, finishing the interview, it was so kind that we were so much time. I have a tradition with my guests. And we end up with a game, okay? And it's today it's an agile game. And I want you, Joe, just to tell me one word of every concept that I tell you. The first word that it pops out to your mind, okay? And you have to be agile, okay? Are you ready, Mr. Joe Justice? Sure, Alejandro, <laughs> sure. Okay, which is the one word that conveys you Tesla. Speed. Elon Musk. <laughs> I had the word right away, but it's mean. Cold. SpaceX. Inspiration. Toyota. Slow. <laughs> Artificial intelligence. Exciting. 
Scrum. Speed. Joe Justice. We cannot repeat, okay, anymore, like in the future. Words. I didn't tell you this, this rule. Joe Justice. Smile. Bill Gates. Parallel. Wiki speed. Sexy. Jeff Bezos. Vain. <laughs> <laughs> and I like Jeff Bezos a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, future of manufacturing. Extreme. Tesla bot. Labor. Cybertruck. Brutal. Roaster. Sex. Starship. Home. Okay. We are done. Now, I, <laughs> Alejandro, I, you're amazing. I, I always start my, my video saying one sentence, the one that I said at the beginning, like, hola, soy Alejandro Saupillo, y estoy aquí para que triunfes, which means, hi, I'm Alejandro, and I'm here for you to succeed. But every time that I have a guest, I give you the pleasure to say it. As you're translating your, your book into Spanish, I would like you to end this interview saying, hi, I'm hola, soy Justice. Y estoy aquí para que triunfes. Hola. Yo, Justice. <laughs> y estoy aquí George. para que triunfes. Y estoy aquí yes. para que triunfes. Tesla, Tesla tequila. <laughs> ok, ok. That, that, that's great. Um, well, well, one last thing. Joe, they can follow you in Joe Justice in Twitter and where else can the viewers follow you abi-agile.com is where i do my business and my books are on lean pub lean pub slash you slash joe justice i'd love to have you help edit any of my books and improve them and if your edits are a lot you'd even be a co-author and i'd love to see you in some of the classes i teach or maybe i can cons consult with you that's an abi agile you can reach me for anything at joe justice And Alejandro, it is absolutely my dream to be on your podcast today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Joe. If you have enjoyed this type of content, subscribe to this channel so you won't miss videos like this one. And I recommend you to watch this other video that I made just for you. Thank you very much from the heart.